Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you are doing great. I hope you are. I am doing great. It was a great day today. I even got my trash out today. Cooked spaghetti for Seth, um, which is his favorite normal thing. Uh, made some frozen zucchini spirals for us for our spaghetti that's actually pretty good and uh, made some vegetables too that we could eat with spaghetti i like to put vegetables on the bottom spaghetti sauce on top and uh mozzarella cheese on top of that it's one of my favorite things to eat instead of eating the noodles i like the noodles but they have a lot of carbs Okay, well, we are going to do Psalm 21 tonight, and I'm going to give you some of my testimony tonight about when Seth was sick. It's going to be very short. It's not going to be very long at all, and I may not be on here for very long either because I'm kind of, I don't know why I'm kind of tired. I've started taking multivitamins. I've I took allergy medicine today. Uh, I don't know. I'm sleepy. And I sleep at night, too. So anyway, I may not be on here for very long. So let's do our prayer. Let's go before God. Let's go before his throne. God, we just praise you and thank you. And we just pray, God, that... We just praise you, God, that you are sovereign over all. You are the great I am. You are the great Jehovah. You are on your throne and you are in control, God. We thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, for being our shelter in the storm, for being our strength and our refuge, God. God, you are mighty and magnificent and powerful. And you are the righteous judge, God, that will judge all unrighteousness. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring. And you are faithful. You are trustworthy. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. You want all to come to Jesus to be saved. Thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just cry out for the lost that they would open, that their eyes and their ears and their hearts would be open to truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to remember the relationship they once had with you to return and to repent and to have their relationship with you reconciled, God. We just pray for all the disasters that are going on, God. There are so, so many. We just pray that all these people's needs are met, God. And we just pray that people will meet their needs with the love and the compassion of Jesus and the hands and feet of Jesus. God, that they would feel the arms of Jesus around them during their time. This very rough time and this very trying time. God, we pray for the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. That you would be with them, God. That they would feel your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen and amen. Well, first of all, I'm going to read you my testimony. And then we're going to do Psalm 21. I'm sorry that I am so sleepy. I don't know what is wrong with me, but I am taking a multivitamin. I'm trying to build my immunity system. I'm on a 21-day sugar fast. That might be it. I haven't had had peanut butter today, but I haven't had any fruit sugar or I had carrots a while ago. It's a little bit of sugar. Anyway, I'm really trying, though. This is day nine. I have mm, 11, 12 more days to go. 
So day nine, praying for healing for children with cancer. Praying for emotional, physical, and spiritual healing also. Praying for strength for families too. Like families that have children that are sick. Praying for them. I am just now sharing the four celebrations we had for Seth. So we had four celebrations. Pictures of his birthday presents at home, which that's a very low-key celebration. Um, his bowling party at Penn's, his party at Los Primos, and a late celebration with Kylie at Storybook Cafe. Each celebration made to show Seth how much he is loved. So many emotions in my head today as I write this, but what stands out most is thankfulness. That 12 years ago today, God supplied miraculously a life-saving cord blood transplant for Seth. Actually, he supplied two, but we only used one of them. That This was a hard season in our lives, but we were never alone. Even when it was just one of us with Seth in the bone marrow unit at Cook's, we felt the prayers in the presence of God. God taught me personally three, three lessons that I still use in tests and trials. Praise Him in all things. Great is His faithfulness, and nothing's too hard for God. When I face difficulties, which we all do, I remember these lessons. I remember reading Job before this season, so my perspective was always, it could be worse, but it was hard. With God's perfect timing, Psalms was next. So for six months, I read a psalm every day, communicated through email with Seth's prayer warriors. And after my three-day pity party, I did have a three-day pity party where I cried the ugly cries. I, I started interceding in prayer for other children and families. So that, that helped me deal with it to look around and see that other people needed prayer too. And so I inv invoked my prayer warriors to pray for these other families too. Um, Seth had so many prayer warriors, many of you reading this today. Prayer warriors made up of family members, church family, promise family, and kingdom family from all over the world. My memories are somewhat of a blur from diagnosis on June 14, 2009 to getting to come home as a family on December 4th, 2009. Seth has been through so much in his life medically, but God is our faithful healer. I believe God healed Seth for a ministry of hugs and love. I can't believe he's 18, but my math says he is. We will always be thankful and grateful for Cook Children's Medical Center, every medical professional that was appointed and anointed by God for Seth and our family. We will always be thankful and grateful for all of our prayer warriors, many of them parents from Cook's. This is my testimony from this season of my life. I choose to do this now in honor of the fight against childhood cancer, praying for healing for all. And then I put my hashtag for this year, hashtag 2021, presence, testify, and encourage. So what that means is that I want to be more in the presence of God this year. I want to testify of his goodness, and I want to encourage others with my testimony or just encourage others. All right, so I encourage you to go and look at all of Seth's pictures. I am not a professional photographer, so it's not so great. But God walked us through a very difficult time in our lives. No, I don't like to see myself on that live video. On, on here because it's going too at the same time. So let's read Psalm 20, 
one. I nearly said Psalm 24, but that's jumping ahead. Three. So many of my friends on Facebook don't know really what we went through with Seth, but um, I just wanted to do a short testimony. I'm supposed to do a testimony on Sunday. I may just read that because it's already done. But um, I do believe in prayer. I do believe that prayer works. I do believe that it is a way to get the attention of God. And it is the way to move God's heart sometimes. <clears throat> okay. And I'm not sure what this Psalm 21 is going to be about. Maybe it will go along with what I just shared. I don't know. Okay. Joy, of, joy in the salvation of the Lord. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. The king shall have joy in your strength, O Lord. And in your salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you meet him with the blessings of goodness. You get a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asks life from you. And you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in your salvation. Honor and majesty you have placed upon him. For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Your hand will find all your enemies. Your hand will find, find those who hate you. You shall make them as a fiery oven in this time, in the time of your anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their offspring you shall destroy from the earth, and their descendants from among the sons of men. For they intended evil against you. They despised a plot which they were which they are not able to perform therefore you will make them turn their back you will make ready your arrows on your string toward their faces be exalted o lord in your own strength we will sing and praise your power so that's just a little snapshot of who the lord is And that there is joy in knowing who he is. And that he will destroy the enemies. He will. For they intended evil against you. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own strength. We will sing and praise your power. Okay, so let's see what, oh, you know what? Bible does this. It's very annoying. Um, so I'm supposed to do 20 or 21 tonight. Oh, that's right. I didn't read one last night. Okay, I read the right one. I think I did. Just in case, I'm going to read 20 also. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. 
I did read this. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, may the king answer us when we call. I did read it. I just didn't remember the first part of it. Okay, so there is no, there's no study part of 21. So we're just going to have to skip that. Um, yeah, we'll just have to, there's just no study to extend, extend what, what we just read. So if you have any testimony, please share it in the comments. I would love to read it. If you have any prayer requests, please share it in the comments. Now, I am going to go ahead and do the salvation message. And um, if somebody wants to get saved. So as you see, that's a picture of Jesus opening the gates, opening the gates of heaven. To invite all in. <laughs> this is not in the same place. That's very annoying. I can't get it. Okay. Anyway, so this is God's invitation into his heaven. Because it's God's heaven. It's not it's not ours. And I have a picture behind me of the new Jerusalem also. And that is our forever home. Have you ever been invited? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. So here are some scriptures that go through, that go with salvation. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans six twenty three. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. That, uh, John fourteen six. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. His heaven is our reward. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So this is the salvation prayer, and you don't have to repeat this salvation prayer. You can use your own. But this just gives you some guidelines, okay? So I'm going to do a space where you can repeat it if you would like. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven and you will come back to usher your church into heaven.
I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for your for the gift of salvation. Please give me the strength to withstand the temptations in my life. Help me to praise and glorify you daily and help me to grow in my relationship with you daily through Bible study and prayer. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You, Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. It's such a happy time when a sinner comes to Jesus. And uh, if you want to grow your relationship with God, then read his word every day. And start in Matthew. Learn more about Jesus. And pray. Pray every day. And find some praise music. And praise every day. All right. Well, it is time for the blessing from God. I can't believe how quickly I'm getting off of here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need peace. We need the peace of Jesus. We need the true peace, not the false peace. The true peace. I feel like I should share something else as a testimony. But I don't know what it would be. I feel like I shared quite a bit on Facebook today. Um, I guess if I could use my testimony to encourage others, it would be that no matter what you're going through, God cares and God loves you very deeply. He wants the very best for you. He has a plan and purpose for your life that you can't even imagine. Will it be perfect? No, but when you go through things like we went through with Seth, you won't go alone. You will have Jesus to help you, Jesus to help guide you. You'll have Jesus right there with you. Because what we went through was being in the valley, just like Psalm 23 talks about being in the valley. We were in the valley and we were facing this insurmountable mountain in front of us, not knowing the outcome. After Seth's diagnosis, he was extremely sick and we didn't know what the outcome was going to be. I was really afraid of a fatal outcome just because of what I knew going in about leukemia. But I didn't know that children take the treatments better, children recover better, and Down syndrome kids recover better. So I didn't know that going in, but I learned. I learned a lot of things. I learned those three lessons, but I learned a lot of things too. Um, I learned to be still. It was a bit crazy. I was working on the weekends sometimes, but it just happened to be that during that space of time that Ricky and I just traded off, he would, I would come home and I would work on the weekends both of my jobs on the weekends and he would stay with Seth on the weekends and I would stay with Seth during the week, Monday through Thursday. And, um, then he would come on 
Friday and we would swap out or maybe he came Thursday night. I don't know. It's been so long ago. We'd swap out because on the transplant unit, you cannot have two parents stay. It may be different now. But 12 years ago, that were that was the rules. Those were the rules. That makes better sense. Those were the rules 12 years ago is one parent at a time. And so we we did that for from September the 21st until about probably sometime in November. He was in there for like two months, I think. And we traded. And then we got to go to Ronald McDonald House for a few weeks. And then we got to go home on December the 4th. We got to come home and have Christmas as a family. That was such an awesome Christmas. We didn't have a lot because we hadn't made a lot of money in that six months. But at least we got to be home. And that was a gift from God. God's perfect timing is perfect. His timing is always perfect. Trust God. Trust God in all things. Do not lean on your own understanding. Just trust God that he has it all figured out. He has it all laid out. He knows what is ahead and we do not. So we just trust him. We just trust him in the moment and we just keep moving forward with Jesus. So that is my encouragement. Trust God in the moment and keep moving forward with Jesus. Do not look back to the past. Nothing can be changed in the past. Trust God in the moment. Keep moving forward with Jesus. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Get your discernment from the Holy Spirit. And uh, just keep mo moving forward. Just keep moving forward. That would be my advice. Just keep moving forward. All right, well, I'm going to pray. I'm going to try to pray some of these things from today. I did earlier today. I'm going to try to pray some more of them, and I may throw something else in, too, for the country. I don't know. I'll just let the Holy Spirit lead. God, we just come to you, and we just thank you, God. I thank you for the lessons that you've taught me. It was a hard time, God, but it was a time of blessing, too. It was a time of learning. It was a time of interceding for others. It was a time to see you move, God. To see my own miracle, God. Through Seth, to see... To see the forgiveness that Seth has for others, God. That was a blessing too. God, we just pray. We pray for all these children that have cancer, God. We just pray for healing for them. We pray for their families, God. We pray for strength. We just pray, God, that they would trust your process of healing, God. And we pray, God, for, um, I may have to cheat and look. We pray for many people for emotional, for physical, for spiritual healing, God. There's so much brokenness in our country, God. There's so much distortion of truth, God, in our country. There's just so much going on. There's so much division in our country, God. We pray that you would heal our land. We pray that we would come in humility, God, and repent of our sins and see you heal our land, God. We believe that it is possible. And we just pray, God, that this would happen. God, we just, uh, we again pray for truth, God, to just spew out of the people that are lying. 
that they wouldn't even know where it came from, just like the movie Liar Liar. God, I just pray for truth. I pray for truth and only truth, God. I pray for a Jesus movement in our country and all over the world, God, one that cannot be stopped, one that just is so loud and proud, God. I pray for SoCal Harvest, God. I pray for success. I pray that you will work in the hearts that are going to come and attend, God, that you would soften their hearts, that you would draw them to Jesus, that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts, God, to truth. And God, we just pray. I pray for all my friends and family, God. I pray for protection and provision and blessings. I pray for direction. I pray for um, you to lead God and guard them, God. And I pray for um, pray for all the disasters, God. I just pray that you would be with these people. I pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, I made it through that prayer without falling asleep. I don't, I really do not know why I'm so sleepy. I wish I could drink some coffee, but I want to sleep tonight. But during the during the winter and during the fall when it starts cooling off, I do have afternoon cups of coffee, but not today. All right, so have an awesome rest of your evening and have an awesome tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Um, I won't be here tomorrow night. I'll be at youth. Tomorrow is see you at the poll. So if you go to school, Get with your school and meet your school at the flagpole tomorrow. It will be countrywide, it will be throughout our country, and it will be throughout the whole world. Students will be meeting at the flagpole to pray, to pray for their school, to pray for their community, to pray for the state, to pray for our country, to pray for the whole entire world. Prayer works, y'all. Prayer works. So much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.